Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam Welcome to another episode of Mike Teskia, it's your brother Gibar Romani. We're answering questions and today we're dealing with understanding the neuroscience behind porn addiction. And the question is trying to, the question is trying to understand like how does pornography affect the brain? And before we get into that, please make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, share, check out the links in the description. Please support this da'wah so more people can be helped. Your contribution goes a long way. You don't understand. Alhamdulillah. So let's right, get right a bit back into it. Um, so number one, we've talked quite often actually about this. And that's the dopamine and reward pathway. So dopamine is the, the neurotransmitter that plays a crucial role in the brain's reward system. You feel good. You feel like you've achieved stuff. For example, if you have completed an assignment and you feel good about it, right? You're going to be extra happy because you've completed it. Now you're going to go out and relax and chill. You're going to feel very good. That's one way to understand that dopamine mechanism. So it is released in response to, as I said, pleasurable experiences. You reinforce the desire to repeat that experience, right? Now if you do well in an assignment, you're going to feel more motivated to do more assignments and to get good marks, achievements, being on a football team, for example, and winning and so on and so forth, right? Gains in gym and whatnot. Uh, when an individual, however, when they watch pornographic content, what happens is basically that the brain's reward system is activated. Like you feel good. You're like, wow. Um, that's what we call PMO, poor masturbation orgasm. So the orgasm, big O, is like the top of the top, right? You get, you release those, uh, uh, those those uh, neurotransmitters that relax, you feel like you've achieved something, but in reality, you have not. So your brain is fooled into believing that. So then that system is activated, however, and it releases um, dopamine. And now this surge, a surge of dopamine is going to uh, increase and create the that pleasure and satisfaction. So now you feel like, wow, I've achieved something, when in reality, you actually have not, because it's not actual intimacy. Right? And then it leads to the next thing because you want it again. So now you have repeated exposure and tolerance. You keep going back to it. However, you build tolerance because it's not like the same as the first time. So now you keep looking for that first boost, which you will not have it. So now you're going to want to look for other stuff, which we've discussed before. Then you have, of course, the craving and addiction. Because now that tolerance develops, the individual develop, uh, uh, need, has a craving and he wants more explicit form of content, more shocking forms of content. We talked about that. It causes that compulsive behavior, which is a characteristic of addiction. Going back and back looking for that first hit. Next is obviously your brain is affected because the more you reinforce a certain neural pathway, your brain is there's that plasticity, it's malleable. And now you're basically changing the neural pathways of reward in your brain. You would be used to, for example, by fitra to be rewarded if you are to be with a woman in halal. But because that has changed, other neural pathways have been reinforced. Now you're more inclined towards the screen and towards a 2D model, not a 3D model. So I keep reinforcing, reinforcing that addiction by going back to it. Right. Then, of course, there's the prefront, uh, prefrontal cortex and impulse control, right? So that, uh, what's happening is uh, the prefrontal cortex is responsible for decision-making and impulse control. And it plays a huge role in addiction because now frequent exposure to this kind of content is going to weaken the prefrontal cortex ability to regulate impulses, um, making it difficult for an individual to control their porn consumption. Not just that, but also other behaviors within their daily life that are very, very important. So, for example, going to work, uh, being motivated, being on time to work, not consuming pornographic uh, you know, content at work, and many other things. Then, of course, you have withdrawal symptoms, like any drug and any addiction. They need to go back to it. Um, they need to go to more explicit content, you're going to have anxiety, irritability, uh, restlessness. Again, we notice this very much in young boys and girls. And these symptoms can, is, are going to join, uh, sorry, can be attributed to changes in the dopamine signaling and, and uh, neural pathways. And of course, it's interesting to understand that we always compare the, this dopamine addiction 
uh, pornography it's itself to uh, addiction to cocaine, a dope, and so on. Because the brain reacts like that. So there's a very huge similarity in what we see in CAT scans when it comes to the brain on pornography and the brain on, for example, dope. Barakallah fikum. Please support our work. May Allah bless you. Uh, and may Allah protect you. As-salamu